Amy, talk to me. Talk to me. Quit playing. Amy? Amy? You call the cops. You tell them to send an ambulance and you do it now! Good morning. Yeah, I think we need to do something. He hasn't been acting like himself. Yeah, I know, but he doesn't respond to me. He just stares at the wall. He doesn't even look at me. Yeah, tomorrow sounds good. It'll be nice to meet you too. You too. Bye. I can't stand to see you like this, Chris. Every day. Look, I, I. Can you just listen to me? Please. You've been through a lot. I don't think either of us will ever get over what happened that day. But I can't. I can't just sit here and watch you waste your life away. There's so much potential to do great things. Amazing things. I feel like I'm living with a zombie. You walk around aimlessly with no expression, no emotion, nothing. It's not you, Chris. I've tried to pretend that everything's okay. I've tried to pray that you would magically get better, but you haven't. I'm tired, Chris. I can't do this by myself. I know that we both felt like we couldn't help Amy through her recovery, but we can at least be there to help each other throughout. I've invited people over to help me help you. People who love and care about you. Why? <laughs> Come in, everybody. Mom, Pop, Isabel, what are you guys doing here? Devin called. She's worried about you, and we just wanted to come by to make sure that you were okay. Seriously? I'm fine. You think staring at this wall all day long is fine? That's not you being fine, son. That's you being lost. 
Well, maybe it's just my way of trying to not feel so lost. Then let me be your compass for a moment. I know people grieve in different ways, but what you're doing, it's not healthy. You haven't taken time to heal. You're letting this pain consume you. Perhaps even a hint of guilt. We're here and we love you, but you have to let us in. Y you can't shut us out. No, no. You are only here because Devin told you to be. You haven't cared about me in a long time. Was I there for you when you needed me the most growing up? No. And that is something that I deeply regret. But I can't change that. And I'm here now, and I'm not going anywhere. You haven't been yourself lately. You know that. It's okay to feel this way, but I just don't want you to push us away. I'm not trying to push you away. I just... I miss her so much. And I, I, I feel like that every time that I get close to someone, they always leave me in the end. I'm not leaving, Chris. You know, when my brother died, it, uh, it rocked me. It took me a long time to find my new normal. I, uh, I feel, uh, I feel him still today. It's like he's not even gone. I feel him whatever I do, if I go hunting, boating, fishing, it's like he's still there. All those emotions, they wash over me all over again. forced myself. I kept pushing every day. I realized he wouldn't have wanted me to be depressed. <sighs> then we found out we were having your mother. And that gave me a new purpose in life. It gave me a reason to get up every day. It changed my whole outlook on life. I am truly sorry that I failed you, Chris. There's something that I wanted to tell you for a lot of years, but I just, I haven't had the courage or the right words to say to you. I, I had a miscarriage and the pain, it was just too much for me to bear. The heroin, it was the only thing that I had to cope. It, it was the only thing that made me feel alive again. Why didn't you tell me? You wanted a younger sibling so badly. You used to have dreams about having a little brother that you could boss around. And I wanted nothing more than to give that to you, but I couldn't have kids anymore. It looks like you found that younger sibling with Devin, and I thank God for that. I came into your life out of nowhere, and you accepted me in spite of how awkward it was. That's who you are, Chris. You're loving, accepting, and, and honestly, the best big brother I could ever ask for. I didn't know who you were my whole life, now it feels like we've known each other our whole lives. I don't want to lose something that's barely started. Thank you all for being here. I wish it was under better circumstances. But I'm, I'm grateful to have you all here. I, I really don't know what to say. 
It's been too long, son. It's time we get in touch and stay in touch. You're not getting rid of me. I love you. I always have and I always will. I love you too, Mom. <laughs> Isabel, hi. Um, I wasn't expecting you. I'm sorry. I should have called. It's just there's something I need to speak with Chris about. He's in the shower. Um, but you can come in. Thank you. You okay? You seem a little upset. I just have a lot on my mind. How's Chris doing? Um, I don't know. It's, he's kind of taking everything really hard. It's been really hard for him to cope with everything going on. It's like he has no hope, no ambition anymore. I can see that. It's like every time I talk to him, it's like I'm talking to a ghost. He's so broken and I don't know how to put him together. No one does. He has to put himself back together eventually. We just have to be there to support him and make sure he knows he's loved. You're right. He's just been through so much. We both have. <sighs> hey, Dev. Um, Isabel, what are you doing here? Hey, Chris, can we talk? Yeah, um... I can go outside. No, no, don't worry. Maybe we can take a walk? Sure, yeah, I'd love that. It was nice chatting with you, Devin. You too. Shall we? See you later. Bye. So, how have you been? Uh, you know, it's it's been a long road, but I'm just glad to have my family and my friends in my corner. And you, of course. You'll always have me in your corner. <clears throat> but I'm worried about you, Chris. Please just don't hide anything from me. If you need to tell me something, I'm never going to judge you. It's just, uh, it's hard to talk about. I know. Just take your time. I'm listening. Um, could we just go sit somewhere? Whenever my sister died, I didn't know how I'd be able to go on. I felt like I had failed her. I felt like I had failed myself. I, I opened my heart up to her. I poured money into her treatment. I talked to social workers. I did absolutely everything that I could possibly do to help her. And then one morning, there she was, crumbled on the bathroom floor, lifeless. God, I, I barely remember that morning. Just the, the, the sounds of police sirens and the silence. Silence was deafening. Seeing her there, laying on the floor, knowing that there was nothing more I could do, no more rehab, no more hospital stays, no more telling her that she could get through this. It was over. I can't say that I know how you feel. I don't. But what I can say is this. You did everything you possibly could to help her. I watched you bend over backwards to help anyone you knew, especially your sister. 
You nurtured her, protected her. And even when she made bad decisions, you made sure that she wasn't being judged by you. You've done that with everybody that you love. Your friends, your family. I'm really proud of you, Chris. But my question is, who's looking out for you? Who's been there for you your whole life? Who's picking you up after you got knocked down? I mean, you've suffered in silence for so long. I think it's finally time for you to let go and free yourself of this burden. I know it's going to be hard, but life isn't over for you. And you've lost a lot, but you've also gained. You, you mean, <laughs> I'm gonna be a father? <laughs> I am going to be a father. I am going to be a father. <laughs> Are you happy? It's a dream come true.